A big warm welcome to another year episode of The Big Talk. My name is Kanar Mgume. And today on the show, we'll be looking at the face of the aspirants of Mukono Municipality. Mukono Municipality is such a hotly contested municipality because it has an incumbent, has been there for 10 years, and also the different political parties that are fighting for space to unseat Honorable Nambo Zibachideke. But allow me to introduce my panel today. On my left, I have Ivan Sentongo, who says that she wants to not only beat Honorable Bet Nambo Zibachideke in the primaries of NUP, <laughs> but also unseat her. Welcome on the show. Thank you, Kanari. And then I also have uh, the mayor of Mukono Municipality. Uh, he is, uh, of course, George Fred Kajimu. He's also the current chairperson of Democratic Party Mukono District. Good to have you on the show, Mayor. Uh, thank you very much, and a good morning, viewers. Uh, we are very happy to be here. I also have a man from NRM. This is Abbas Sozi Seguja. He's the former youth councillor from 2011 to 2016 in Mukono Municipality. Abbas Sozi, good to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you very much, Kanan. Good morning, viewers. All right, so Mukono Municipality is an interesting constituency because the incumbent... Betty Nambose Bachereke, who is going to join us in just a short while, is seeking a re-election against, um, you know, about nine challengers, including her fellow Democratic, uh, uh, you know, she's from Democratic Party and now she's joined NUP. So there are people in Democratic Party, like the mayor here, and then there are also people in NUP, the party that is now joined, like Ivan here, who want to unseat her. But then what is interesting about this Mukono race is that uh, the mayor here uh, in, in, at the beginning was appointed as uh, the uh, coordinator of people power in Mukono. Yeah. I am right, right? <laughs> Yes. So he's okay. still in the Democratic Party. He's the coordinator of people power, but yet he is not in NUP. Now, that's an interesting race. Uh, earlier in the year, many people had hoped that he has the backing of Chadondo East and now presidential aspirant Honorable Robert Chagulagi. But then, is it true that Robert Chagulagi is going to back the mayor here and leave <laughs> Betty Nambozi Machineke, who is in NUP? That's why the rest is interesting. But well, let me begin this off with the discussion now. Let me begin with you, uh, Mayor. Yes. What do you want to do for the people of Mukono? Uh, a lot, because I come to... Uh, to political administration after a very rich and wide experience in many fields. I'm, um, I'm uh, a chartered accountant by profession, but also I've been uh, working in the international organization as expatriate. But I, I have also been in many, many organizations. Also, I've been the mayor now. So I come to Mukono knowing Mukono very well because I invest in Mukono and also as a mayor and also as a person that has been in this field. I've got quite a lot of gaps that I've realized and that I would like to fill. For example, I know that we have done very well as a mayor, a lot of transformation that we have done within a very short time. But I have realized the gaps. The biggest gaps that we have in Mukono is that the leaders in Mukono cannot work together. That uh, most of the leaders... You're saying that you, the leaders in Mukono, cannot work together? Haven't been working together. Mm. I've tried, and I think we are making progress. And I want to step on that one and uh, make leaders in Mukono work together, even if we come from different political parties. Where is the problem? I think the problem is uh, thinking that uh, you can make a change alone. There is no person that can make it a significant change alone. You must realize that we are different. You must realize that each one of us has got some added value. So we need, when we go to office, we need to focus on what we want to do for our people. What we want to do for our people is to transform them, to change their livelihood, as the number one thing that we need to do. And that cannot be done by one person. All the cities, even in Europe and so on, were built by their own people. And therefore, you cannot come to leadership and think that you are the only person, that you are the only person that has got uh, ideas. You need to come down 
and be able to work with the other people. You need to do a lot of lobbying. You need to understand that you can lobby from the current government, even if you are not uh, a member of the same political party. You need to keep very good contacts with the outsiders to be able to get donors. So all that requires a person of a character like me who can at least calm down and uh, put respect to others and be able to find the ways of how we can work together. Let me put this to you. You have been a mayor and you still are. When you look at the social services in Mukono, they are lacking. And as a leader, you are responsible. Yeah. And you should be held accountable yeah. for the services <coughs> that are crippled in Mukono. Uh, not held accountable, but I'm responsible to making a change. For no, the past, held accountable for the past, the I'm accountable for the time I've been there, and exactly. I'm accountable to what I'm supposed to do. But already, I've got quite a lot of uh, accountability to give, because the period I've been here is just about uh, uh, four years, and I think Mukona has gone through a lot of transformation in the past four years. You can uh, look at the roads that we have built, the new roads that we have opened up. You can look at uh, the hospital, which was a health center for changing within uh, four years to become a general hospital. You can look at uh, uh, activities and uh, projects that we've done the for the The services resource. in that hospital are still questionable because it has more than 200 outpatients every day yes. coming in from not just Mukono, but also yeah. in districts of Kayunga, Buikwe, yes. Buvuman, some parts of Wakiso. And even people who are coming from like uh, Jinja and Kampala mm -hmm. and are visiting Mukono, they go to that hospital. Yeah. But when you look at the services in that hospital, they are not impressive. You would not say that you are proud of such a yeah. hospital. On, on the contrary, mm -hmm. uh, the hospital in Mukono has been number one for the past four years, judging hospitals, government hospitals, in the same category. Mm -hmm. So you cannot say that it's, of course, not doing what we should have expected but it's doing quite a lot. Because the kind of uh, uh, patients that that hospital receives, is the number is like what is received by other general hospitals when it's a health center for. Mm. If, you look at, you can, if you look at the contributions, there is the central government contribution and there is the municipality contribution. For example, the central government is supposed to provide medication for 350 million every year. But actually, the central government contributes 80 to 85 million of medication every year. So you cannot judge from that angle. You can only judge looking at all other factors. But look at what we as Mukono have contributed as a Mukono municipality. Every year we have devoted about 200 to 300 million shillings from the local revenue to improve the hospital. On top of that, I've been able to identify external donors like Billy Gates, who have actually put in 900 million over a period of five years, and the Mukono municipality, 100 million. So, the medical facilities and the services in Uganda are still lacking, and especially the facilities that are government-sponsored. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, let me get to you, uh, Abbas. So what, what did you do while you were a youth counselor? Some people find it hard to trace what you actually left behind. <laughs> Thank you very much, Karen. Actually, I did, I, I left the legacy, I did quite a lot. Uh, when I was a youth councillor of Mukono municipality, first of all, I was the first youth councillor uh, for that municipality because it had just attained the status of uh, a municipality. Uh, uh, the first thing I did, uh, I, I actually uh, developed a relationship between Mukono municipality with the other uh, municipalities of Vima Bay. Uh, and that partnership is still ongoing. We had the exchange, we had the exchange, ex exchange programs between the youth of Vima Bay in Sweden and Mukono municipality. And the, out of that contribution, we got a youth, uh, a youth center 
in Mukono Municipality for all the youth where they can attain and get skills. Uh, my colleague can, uh, can admit that because it is ongoing, even the construction of that youth, uh, youth center is ongoing now. Another thing, uh, because besides being a youth counselor, I was also the chairperson of, of the youths in Mukono Municipality and of the youths in the district. Uh, we, I was behind the proposal when we met the president in Fort Potro of the youth livelihood. It's unfortunate that it crippled somewhere, somehow, but the idea was to have all the youths attain loans, and out of these loans, they can develop themselves, and it was supposed to be a revolving, a revolving fund. But it's unfortunate that that money came and it was somehow mismanaged. But I was... Mismanaged by who? By the current government. Because for, uh, it was unfortunate. So, so, so then how do you seek to um, go to parliament using an NRM ticket of the current government? I mean, I know I'm saying the current government at the municipality. Or the municipality. The municipality. I, I think because, uh, be, because for us, when we left, we left when the, the, the proposal was in the pipeline. When we met the president, we asked the president, please, we need to do something for the youths in this country. So, so then that, are, that, that is as good as nothing, which means that your impact was not yeah. there. No, my as much as, my, you, must have, you must have lobbied for the money, but then if he did not benefit, no, we lobbied, and there are, the, there are those few who benefited. But the problem, where, where the problem came, where I, where I say that actually it did not move as the, the initiators expected, that the, the, we wanted it to be a revolving fund. The 10 youths used the money. After some time, they pay back. Then the other group also attains that money. After some time, they pay back. But it's unfortunate that he, actually that money, the youths have not been in position to pay back as so, we... So these leaders misused the... They misused the fund. Then another thing, we uh, but, also... Uh, that's a huge allegation. That is a huge allegation. <laughs> no, that it I is must true. Explain. Who is He's accountable to, for yeah, the money? Uh, you're, 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 you're going to answer. Oh. Yeah, you're coming. Who is coming. accountable yeah. for that money? Because, for that because fund. they were accountable. How can you have a project I, I, without I thought, accountability? I thought I'm the, I'm the one with the floor. Then another thing, as we may all are aware, that Mukono municipality, it is the largest municipality with 20 square miles. And most of its parts, like in Goma, it's rural. So I did lobby for some of the farm implements, like the spray pumps. I did lobby for seeds, for the some youths who actually who are in agriculture. And but, it's but, also but in record. The, uh, Abbas Sozi, this youth you're talking about, um, when you look at the unemployment in Mukono municipality among the young people, those that actually uh, some are in school, and that's why they're not uh, employed, but when you look at the unemployment among those that are yes, in yes, school yes, yes. and those that have graduated, it's still high. So when you say that you lobbied... Uh, so yeah, that's where I'm what coming, Canada. That's yeah. where I'm coming. Let me also talk about unemployment. I also advocated for a policy, because as we may realize that Mukono municipality is an industrialized municipality among all the municipalities we have in the country. So I did suggest and, uh, and advocated for policy that let at least 70% of the casual laborers who are working in Namave be at least from Mukono municipality. But it's unfortunate now, actually, you find, you find a queue of people moving at, at around four of work, moving, uh, going to Chira. But, but all you're doing is lamenting on the things that you did and then did not come to play. Um, <laughs> and, and that, that, that's if, if I were a voter, I would want to know what you actually did for me and, and actually came to pass because you're lamenting. Yeah, the, 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 the reason why I want to contest as a member of parliament is to see that what I suggested and what I loved is, in, is the process. It is moving and it is working. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, when, when, we left, when I left as a councillor, I'm seeing some of the projects I initiated, they are not in use, they are not moving as I initiated and as I expected. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you so uh, much. Can Abbas. you give yes, me a... Yes, two minutes as, as Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try to, to be very fast. Education. And I think that uh, if you are competing, 
and you are competing for votes, we shouldn't do allegations and especially wrong allegations. <laughs> for example, uh, there was no funding for the youth before I came into office of Mukono Municipality that was controlled by Mukono Municipality. It was being controlled by the district. And uh, that money has never been returned, and most of the people that we are actually uh, uh, responsible are people that come from your party. That is the ruling party. For those uh, uh, funding that we are given before, during my period, it has been youth livelihood project funding. And I'm one of the most performing municipalities as far as that project is concerned. And the Mukono has been taken on record that we have been able to recover and they give money again to other youth. That's then a lie. Let me, let me finalize. Then another thing. Uh, when I came to office four years ago, the youth center was on the foundation for 15 years. And when I came into office, we modified even the foundation, and we started rebuilding the youth center. Today, in the four years, that youth center is about to be opened. So you can see that uh, uh, the contribution made before. You were, you were, you were honorable counselor. Yes. True. You can make initiatives. Yes. The implementation is not very much yours. But for me to say that what you did that time has been missed by the current uh, government. Mr. Canary, can I say that there district. has been massive Thank misappropriation? Um, I have said over here, if you want to unseat Katie yes. Nambos in Bachileke, yes. but also defeat her in the primaries, talk to us about your plan for Mukono Municipality. Thank you very much, Canary. My name is Ivan Sentong, as you've said. Um, I'm contesting on the ticket of National Unity Platform. And uh, I have no doubt that I'll be the flag bearer because if you test my, let me borrow the word DNA, it is the true DNA of National Unity Platform and not a hybrid. I have not crossed from many parties, but I'm very confident and the, the support I have on the ground and when you consider the number of youth who are behind me who are agitating for change for good reasons yes the municipality population is more than ready to change the leadership from the top to the bottom and NUP national unity platform will sweep the constituents yes but what do you want to do for the people of Mukono municipality yes uh, these gentlemen have been talking, and uh, I'm glad they started the debate. You can see a lot of mismanagement of funds. They are reporting here in the studios of NBS. My friend, my brother, Abbas, is blaming him. Him is blaming the government. And everybody is saying this one, the other one. Could be it is time now to audit them. The first audit is to remove them from office. You cannot audit somebody, or you cannot check somebody when he's in the seat. And it is obvious, but more importantly, I want to bring change in the leadership. The problem now has been in the leadership. They are quarreling, they are fighting, they are disgruntled over small things, probably the money they are talking about. The time now is ready for us. Uh, and that's why I'm asking uh, the youth and will, the population will, will, of Mukono say, to agree uh, with you me. Can down your comments and you will, you <laughs> to, to agree with me that we need to change. Going, we need to, to change them, the remove them from the positions where they are comfortable the and the services are not coming. Come My role as MP will be the supervisory role. I'm going to be inspector number one to supervise. Why are the, why are the, why is the infrastructure looking like this? You can be surprised the road from his office to the district. I worked with the university for 
over 10 years. That road was good. And now it is dilapidated. My role will be to lobby, to inspect if we have the funds from the central fund, if we have money from the municipality, what is it doing? I want to be the checkpoint and I will lobby for my people. I will bring vocational training schools. Already I have one where my, 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 my youth are working to collect enterprises in Miss India. They are doing welding, they are learning plumbing. Those are my initiatives because I can write proposals. When I get opportunity to go to German, South Africa, like opportunities availed to members of parliament to go out, not to visit and come back and bring back luggages and ornaments. It is to lobby for the constituency. Okay, I, what has the current leadership not done that you want to change? Exactly. I want to see that our roads are clean. When you compare Mukono municipality and other towns, now others are cities, we were ahead of them. Mukono was a model district. Mukono started local government system during uh, Mr. Chiwanuka. And all the pilot projects were coming to Mukono. These days, Mukono is lagging behind. I want to bring Mukono back to its original positioning. I want it to grow. We cannot even talk about a city, and yet we could have expanded. There are many good schools, factories are coming in Mukono, but you don't hear the vibrance. Why? Somewhere, there's somewhere where leadership needs to be checked. And one of my biggest tasks when I become the, the MP, the member of parliament, is to make sure that the leadership is well coordinated and the funds are put to right use. Certainly, I would prefer to work with many leaders from National Unity Platform, so that we, we check the impunity, the misappropriation, the... Who was the misappropriated one? Uh, my friend Abbas has reported himself to, to this desk, and he claims it is him. Uh, him, he said, no, it is the district. That, that now, my role will, will start from there, <laughs> and we will certainly know who is accountable for the youth money, who, why is the waste rotting on the road, where are the skips? Where, if the budget is passed, these people sit in many councils and they pass budgets, is the money put to the right use? That would be my, my role. Okay, thank yes. you, Ivan. Sent over. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to respond. <laughs> yeah, but I want to give time to the fourth panelist who so just okay. joined us, uh, Zilmara Chigundu from the Democratic Party. He's also the spokesperson of Democratic Party in Mukono. And uh, he has served before uh, in Goma Sub County, and now he says he wants to unseat Honorable Betty Nambozi Bachileke. Talk to us about your plan, uh, Mr. Zidimara. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. I have not got your name. Kanaram is my name. Yes. Thank you very much for hosting me. Uh, Get close to the microphone. I'm also glad that this is my first time to appear in this studio. So I'd like to extend my thanks to the entire management of NBS for having granted me. We're also happy to have you here. So, so that I can so be heard using uh, these communications. As you have introduced me, I will further introduce myself. I, you have introduced me as the spokesperson of the party, DP, in the district, but I am the de facto spokesperson of the party at national level. What, what do you mean? What, what I mean, I have, I have pronounced myself as a spokesperson of the party, and now that we are going to go next week, I mean early September, uh, between the 9th day and the 11th day of September, I am going to contest for that slot. Yeah, but if you're going to, if you're aspiring to contest, to contest, that yes. does not make you the de facto spokesperson now of the entire party. Kakande, the, the former spokesperson of the party, mm. defected to the National Unity Party Forum, and therefore, he himself as the spokesperson of the party. So there's a patch 
So I am. Yeah, but if there's a virtue, you don't announce yourself as spokesperson, right? That's an irregularity. For a leader like you who wants to be the irregularity. But I am now speaking for the party, even as national. So that's why I've said. You were, I've not seen any official announcement from the Democratic Party saying that Zirimara. Certainly, is, is, there cannot be is the official announcement because in the DP we do not appoint, we do not uh, mean hand pick. You appoint but yourself. I can appoint myself because I am aspiring for the same seat. So I am, in other words, I am. <laughs> what can I say? I am, I'm, I'm showing the, the public, mm. the entire fraternity of the Democratic Party, that I'm, I'm competent. Can you see? I've done it elsewhere. So if you're competent, you're aspiring to contest on the yes. same seat, you've announced yourself, that will not be a quali the qualities of, the, of a leader of, 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 of you know, any it category. Be a quality, it can be a quality of it. For instance, I am aspiring for a member of parliament, but I, I've already said that I'm the next member of parliament. All right, because I know <laughs> people are going to vote for me. <laughs> Do, talk to us about way, your no? plan. Okay, so, and then later we'll get into the issues of okay. DP in okay. Mukono. Okay. So my plans as member of parliament. First of all, as I introduced myself, I have been a councillor some 15 years back at the district council. Between Nukoma 2001, yeah, representing Goma Sub County. So while at the district, uh, in the district council, I found a lot of challenges mm. that as a district councillor, you know, we have little mandate. Okay? You know, as far as development, of a constituency like a Mukono municipality is concerned. Now that Mukono municipality is a city, it is semi-autonomous. I mean, the district does its work, municipal, the municipality also does its work. So as a cancer, you, you find, you, are, you play a, a minimal, minimal is role Mukono in as far as the development of the constituency. Pardon me, is Mukono a city already? I have said Mukono is a municipality. Let him not be strong, because I know what I'm talking about. Okay. And as I have talked to my constituents, mm. that being at the level of a municipality <laughs> is next to a city. But when you look at Mukono municipality, which is next to a city, because from municipality, the next elevation is a city. So as being uh, next to a city, but when you look at the infrastructure, first of all and foremost, the infrastructure in Mukono municipality, it is wanted. The roads in Goma sub county, most especially. Because uh, town council, I mean, Mukono Central Division, is a little bit okay. Although not all that it's okay. Not. A little bit okay because it started as Where is the it town okay? council. <laughs> what is the order here? When? Is it? I, I, I think mean, you're time. I'm an advocate. I'm a lawyer by profession. My prof in my profession, when others speak, the rest. When I'm speaking, the rest listen to me. He was speaking, I never intervened. So let him not distract me. So what I will say that uh, at at a level of Mukono, I mean municipality next to a city, when you look at the infrastructure, I was talking about Mukono uh, Central Division, which in my very have opinion is a little bit okay in as far as infrastructure development is concerned. Mukono. Mukono Central Division. Mm. Because municipality is constituted of two divisions. One, Central Division Mukono and Goma Sub County, where I come from. Mm. But I'm now looking at Goma Sub County, which was a rural city, sub county, and just being elevated to a municipality level, uh, Goma Sub County becoming a division. So you can imagine from sub county to division, not, not, has not been at the status of the town board, not at the status of the town council, but just was just pushed to a level of a division. So when you go deep, in the villages, mm. right? Okay, the parish. There are roads there, Nagusupe, Jindabisidi, uh, Nyanja, all those roads are passing. In fact, if you pass through them, you cannot believe that you are in municipality. I understand that it is what we call a district road committee, where a member of parliament, because there, is, there has been a talk, that you see, members of parliament, my friend, that's why I'm coming and I've told the constituents that if members of parliament, my friend, <laughs> as given as they, okay, because the, the, the sitting member of parliament, even like those before, they've been making that agitation that for us we're not concerned about uh, the, uh, the infrastructure. Our role is to go in parliament and make laws. And in any case, what laws have they made? Are they what impact are those laws? I mean, how are they have, have those laws impacted to the people? But as I've said, I have come. I know the role of member of parliament, and 
no, much as a member of parliament does not directly deal with the infrastructure, for instance, making roads, but be, uh, as a member, uh, as the, because I've said there's a district road committee where a member of parliament in the district sits with that committee. So when money is lobbied from government, and for instance, if a slow, like a one billion, name it, when it comes to the district, a member of parliament sits on that road committee and then tries to influence that. No, 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 let us make these roads in my constituency as they see. I understand now Honorable Chibule is the chairman, but I've been told, I need to, correct, to be corrected. I didn't want to state this when my sister is not uh, present, and now that is absent, let me state it. I may be corrected. I've been told that my sister has never attended such, such meetings. So, well, she's going to do in a short time. Okay, uh -huh. well, when, she to when she joins yeah. us, let her. That she has never the attended any meetings. According to what I know, mm. that she has never attended such meetings. She has never attended to such competition. So that may be one of the reasons why roads in uh, Goma Sub County are that, in that sort of state. Mm -hmm. well, two, if you look at the, uh, the revenue that is collected in the entire municipality, Goma Sub County takes the land share. For instance, uh, close to 70%, if not 80 comes from Goma Sub County because you may appreciate most factories and Goma Sub Counties. But there are so many, I mean, income revenue, I mean, uh, revenue, sources. revenue sources that are in Kono municipality as compared to those in, in Kono Central Division. So I, I would expect that as a member of parliament, I mean, why should Goma Sub County, which contributes more than 70% of the revenue base eh, from Goma Sub Count, why should, shouldn't we get a share that is befitting our contribution in terms of revenue? So yes. I find uh, that there is something like unfairness, but that is contributed by the level of representation, uh, the personality, the way they conduct themselves, the way they have got the capacity to go and lobby and even the knowledge about what is supposed to be done. Okay, thank yeah. you so much, Zimara. Uh, you wanted to respond uh, on some of the yes. issues that you, <coughs> you know, we talked about. <coughs> when, <coughs> wherever we are in these kind of meetings, people will judge us, and we need to be professional and they have display high integrity. You don't bring an accusation, an allegation that you don't have basis for. For example, when you say misappropriation, there is no misappropriation. And there him. is a clear, no, I don't, I don't worry, I'm just talking to you. <laughs> there is there are proper ways of finding out. And every year there are audits that are being carried out. Mukono Municipal has got a clean record of all audits. So we shouldn't just jump out on that. So that is, I think, it's explained. Then another point that I wanted to talk about is uh, <clears throat> when you talk uh, as a member of parliament, when you talk about roads, you are, not res you are not responsible, you are not involved in the actual construction, but you can do lobbying, which is, which is okay, and which everybody here has uh, displayed. But uh, we must realize that the, the kind and the status of roads that we have today actually come from the fact that the funding from the central government to local government and specifically municipalities and the Mukono municipality is very, very low. Mukono mm -hmm. municipality has got 350 kilometers of roads, mm -hmm. which expand every, every year by about 10 kilometers. And the money that comes from the government to do tarmac can only do three kilometers of roads in two years. That means we need about 700 years to do the roads of being tamak. <laughs> so for, when we are here as the people that <laughs> want to realistic. come, we should be realistic. Okay. And, uh, on on that note, I would so. like uh, us to take a short commercial break. But when we return, we're going to be looking into the issues and social services inside Mukono municipality, how they have improved over time, those that have been left behind, and the gaps 
right after this short commercial break. This is the big talk. Good morning.